What's its rate of climb, Sergeant? 20,000 feet a minute, sir. Phillips, give me a reading on altitude and distance. Altitude, 10 miles. Speed, 1,000 miles an hour. It's 900 miles since time of launching. We'll be losing in a couple of minutes. She's right on course. Dr. Rostov, looks as if this atomic-powered engine of yours is going to outmode jet proportion. We'll see, General. It's out of range, sir. Desert station calling top of the world. Come in, top of the world. Hello, desert station. Pip moving in on top of the world. Altitude, 23 miles. Speed, 1,800 miles an hour. Heading due west. On course as chartered. She's practically over our heads right now, heading out to sea. Contact Desert Station. Yes, sir. Point for turn back. This thing better work. Hello, Neptune. We are waiting. Come in. Over. Do you get me, Neptune? Do you get me? This is Desert Station. We are waiting. Anything wrong? Over, Neptune. You get me, Neptune. You get me. Desert Station waiting. Anything wrong? Over, Neptune. Desert Station. We can't reverse the rocket. It's out of control. It won't turn back. The rocket isn't turning back. The speed is fantastic. It's 100 miles past us. 120. 50. 75. 200. Get them back. Desert Station calling Neptune. Yes, Desert Station. This is Dr. Michael Rostov. Are you sure your reading is correct? Are you sure you haven't miscalculated? No, sir. We're positive. Came in right on schedule. On its exact course. Where is it now? It's getting below the horizon. It's gone. Neptune's still standing by, Desert Station. What orders? Have them keep a clear channel. Yes, sir. Desert Station calling Neptune. Stand by. Keep channel clear. Roger. Neptune standing by. Over. Dr. Briggs, traveling for three more hours at its present rate of speed, same fixed course, where would you say it would crash? Somewhere within this radius. Not good, is it? Not good, but at least not a total failure. If we can ever recover it, we'll find why it didn't come back. Gentlemen, you represent the armed forces. You know what this test means. Right now, it's a failure. We've always managed to be first in a long race against time. We proved that with the atom bomb. But if we don't recover this rocket and make it work first, or if someone else should recover it before we do, well, you know the consequences. It isn't the money we've spent. It's the time out of the lives of men like Rostov and Phillips and Briggs. So thousands of hours spent in research by the men working under them. Those hours represent a large portion of our nation's security. If we don't get that rocket back, we may never survive to know just how much security we lost. We'll need your full cooperation. I'll get an okay for a search party. Simmons, Atomic Energy Commission. Line to the White House, please. Scrambling. Another Demitas. 
No, thanks. Coffee's bad for my sense of humor. And with you, I have to stay on my good behavior. You mind if I tear down a few of my inhibitions? Not at all. That's what it's there for, Major Nolan. Joe's the name. Remember? Don't let the rank frighten you. Habit, I guess. I guess. You don't seem to be running out of inhibitions, either. Drink your drink, Joe. Mala, I... Uh... Tell me more about your being a flight instructor. The boys you train to fly, what are they like today? They're great. No more hot rod jockey pilots, no more flying by the seat of the pants. These boys think. The day of the prop on planes is over. These boys flying today have to know their engineering, aerodynamics, what makes jet. We're after the same kind of brain power that MIT is, or Carnegie Tech could. Hey, wait a minute. You had me doing this same show the other night. That's right, I'd forgotten. It was, let me see, you were taking me up to the door to say good night. Oh, I remember. You wanted to come inside and show me how you simulated landings at 10,000 feet. Uh, oh, sure. What's the matter with me? That was Tuesday night I saw you. Uh-uh. Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sure, of course. Wednesday, uh, crash landings. <clears throat> Parachute jumps? <clears throat> Takeoffs? I was tired that night, Joe. You left me at the front door. No, please, don't get up. I'll change the record. The dinner was magnificent. It was not good to sit after such a heavy meal. Let's give the music a break, shall we? Very sweet of you to worry about my figure. A woman appreciates such thoughtfulness. From such worries, a person can develop in some. What a shame. You fly a plane as well as you dance. I manage. Those simulated landings, I'd like... Well, it certainly took you a long time getting around to that, Major. It'll never happen again. The door. I don't hear anything. Maybe you better answer it. If you say so. Yes. Pardon me, ma'am, but is uh, Major Nolan here? What is it, Sergeant? Orders for you to report back to the base at once, sir. They'll have a plane warming up for you at the flight line. At once? At once, sir. <sighs> All right, Sergeant. Come back soon, Joe. Like a homing pigeon. I'd like to finish our discussion about simulated landings. Yeah. What time is it, Sergeant? 2.30, sir. You would have looked a whole lot better to me at 3.00. I don't mean to sound personal, Sergeant, but how did Just you... following orders, Major. If I hadn't come across this at your quarters, I uh, might not have found you for another 30 minutes. That was careless of me, wasn't it, Sergeant? Very careless of you, sir. If you don't mind my saying so, sir, you're an awfully tough man to follow. I don't want any more complaints out of you, sweetheart. Wooly gave you all new parts, now use them. And you? Yeah. My blood you got. Half the night I spent over you. What happens? Wrong size. Yeah. Now you got a new one that fits. Use it, be relaxed, and satisfied. Sergeant Tatlow, the CO wants you. What, and leave us sitting here practically naked? If you want to wind up taking hot and cold baths in a straitjacket, that's your business. Mine is to take you to the CO. You coming? Orders. <laughs> that's all they know. They get them? They give him. You get him, you're stuck. And is your draft board cap? Yeah. Come on. For the next 30 days, stay lost. 
Now, don't misunderstand me. I don't want to make you feel terrible, but I always said I'd never die in a plane. Now, let me see. Oh. oh, yeah. She got married last month. Yeah. I'll keep them flying, Jackie, while I'm on leave. I'll tell you all about it when I get back. Lieutenant Wilson? One L or two? Lieutenant Daniel Wilson. Yeah. See, I want you right away. Dame said she voted last year. Maybe she lied. I can't understand it. to go on and leave, fill my life with all kinds of contentment and peace. And what happens? My friend puts in a request for his friend to come hold his hand and babysit for some cyanists. I lost out on a little contentment and peace myself. So why pick on me? Because I missed your ugly face, Danny boy. I got lonesome. Because you were so pleasant and uncomplaining those two delightful years we spent living in that romantic South Pacific jungle together. <laughs> yeah. We ought to crash on an island that's loaded with guerrilla resistance. You slap a gun in one hand, a knife in the other, and in two seconds you're a South Pacific commando. What a picnic. You got liberated. Yeah, I got liberated. Look where it got me. Liberation. It's a wonderful thing. Have strength to it. Sergeant, how about some coffee? Come right up, sir. Look at a fuselage, really stacked, huh? You get a load of it, get a load out of wing spread. Uh, listen to her sink. I tell you, she's a dream doc, my baby. If she can only cook. Yeah. <laughs> oh, doc, yeah, I can see you haven't had much experience with danger. You know, the first thing you gotta know is never, never spoil that makeup. Uh, Sergeant, tell me, uh, what was that point we just passed over? Well, I'm the wrong guy to ask, doc. You know, looking out from high places makes Little black spots do a ballet in front of my eyes. It gets me very dizzy. And you in the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Uh, got some coffee for you, Doc. Coffee? Oh, yes, thanks. That's well, just what I need about this time. But definitely. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't know about you, Doc, but these long trips always get me a little sleepy. Figured a little coffee might keep us all awake, yeah? Thanks, Sergeant. When I feel myself getting tired, I'll let you know. I should, Doc. Characters. It was bad as flying a bunch of congressmen to visit the war front. Why, Willie, how you talk. This is a posh assignment. We're hauling VIPs, distinguished scientists. Sergeant, you should have brewed them some liquid hydrogen, served with smashed atoms on crackers. Yeah, yeah, I'll serve them. One joke was taking pictures through a window. Another one looks like he's writing a letter to Einstein. That Rostov guy's playing games with a map, but what do we do? Go chasing after a rocket. It's a naughty word, Sergeant. Top secret. Hey, take over. I'm gonna play Boy Scout back there. Let you two aggravate each other. Keep your roses happy. Ulcers, he says. My ulcers never had such a good flower with me this trip. Glad you're enjoying it, Dr. Phillips. Do we land anywhere, Major? We'll be coming down in about three hours to refuel. Keep 
Anything check on us, Dr. Rostov? Afraid the Air Force will lose its way? Partly, Major. Scientists can't afford to take chances. We try to evaluate every element, but sometimes even that isn't enough. Like uh, a rocket not turning back when it's supposed to? The mechanical element, the fraction of an inch, a tiny miscalculation. There are always unpredictables. And I wouldn't know about that. My life's always depended on the human elements. Well, I'll see you later. down to pick up some fuel now. Hold tight. It's gonna be bumpy downstairs. Looks like this is it. We're now approaching rocket's point of departure, where Neptune radar unit lost contact. From now on, keep your eyes peeled. If the rocket hit the ocean, you'll see a die marker covering the spot. I'm going upstairs so we can get a good look. rocket ran out of fuel. left. I'm swinging over it so you can take a look. Rostov, friends, I picked up something. The Geiger's jumping all over the place. Controls are conked out. The electrical system shot. The whole panel is dead, Joe. It's dead as will be if you don't dish this baby and bail out. Sergeant, get back and take care of the others. I'm gonna try and make that island. Yes, sir. Now we have to hit the show. Count three and four. I'll meet you down below. You're okay. You're okay, Doc. The major's heading for the island. Oh, 
Amalia Major. Bring her back to me in one piece. Be kind of her. Be gentle with her. She won't double cross you. Is she Major? I'm all right, but she's washed up. She'll never bounce her tail again. Got the first aid kit. Bridge is bleeding. You did a beautiful job, Major. I didn't think we had a chance. Thanks. I like living, too. This will hurt for a minute. Yeah, that's what I always tell my kids. What went wrong? I don't know. Magnetic instruments, the radio, everything. They just stopped cold. That's strange. Just before we crashed, the Geiger registered intense radioactivity. What do you make of that? We're over something hot. Other than that, your guess is as good as mine. Hey, I hope that Geiger didn't get smashed. No, still working. But there's nothing. Hey, my watch is going. It stopped before, but now it's going. Come on, let's go out and take a look at this South Sea paradise. Be all right, Briggs. Doesn't look too forbidding. Seems rather peaceful. Talk to some of our guys who crashed in New Guinea during the war. Headhunters, cannibals. This island may be a park, but I'm not going to depend on it. And maybe we ought to try to get the radio working, huh? Let somebody know where we are. We're under orders not to break radio silence until we find the rocket. Oh, that's just fine. Headhunters, cannibals. Break out the guns and ammunition, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Round up what food we have. Better check all your equipment. Take only the essential things. Looks like we might be camping out for a while. set up for pigeons. We don't know their language. Yes, she might be able to help us. I know a couple of Melanesian dialects. I'll try them out on her. Who are you? You know English? From missionary school, island over there, where my people go. Your people left? Why? Firebird fly over village, send out flame and smoke. The rocket. It must be the rocket. We're in luck. Earth tremble. People frightened. Leave in boats. Uh, this firebird, uh, uh, where did it land? On sacred mountain, home of gods. Chiefs say spirit angry at bird, make earth tremble. Why didn't she leave with the rest of them? Rocks fall down. My father hurt. Brother and I stay until he die. But who are you? Uh, we came after that firebird to take away its evil. They can do that? If you could take us to where it landed. No, no. No, no. Sacred mountain taboo. Uh, if you show us where this firebird came down, we can break its spell. It'll never fly again. You sure? Your people can come home and live in peace again. I show way to sacred mountain, but it is taboo. 
You will not come back. Their sacred mountain, home of gods. You mean that's where the firebird went? Couldn't land on a nice soft beach. Had to pick the top of a mountain. Well, there's nothing yet. But any radioactivity would be shielded from us by the mountain. Aren't you coming with us? No. We'll see that nothing happens to you. Sacred mountain taboo. No one ever come back from home of gods. That's the first dame ever saw run on on you, Joe. You must be losing your touch. like we start climbing. It seems we have no alternative. And one thing, nobody can say we're not getting plenty of exercise on this trip. Who needs it? Hey, you can't even see the top. You get dizzy up there, Sergeant, you want to bail out, you've always got your parachute. Yeah, what happens if it's dark? You won't get lost, you light matches on the way down. Say, hang on. You think you can make it, Briggs? Yeah, I'll be all right. 
curse! Come on, Willie. Oh. You made it, old boy, you made it. Cigarette, will you? Seems like we've been climbing for days. There's no top to this rock pile. You got an appointment somewhere? What's the matter, Doc? Anything wrong? No, I'm just making a check with the Geiger. Getting anything? Slight reading. Very slight. From the rocket? Let's hope so. Hey, Doc, is your head clear? Sure. I wish I could say mine was. Well, let's go. Yeah, so soon? Come on, get your packs on. You got an appointment someplace? Yeah, with a rocket. Come on. kind of corrosive gas generated from the earth. Oh, great. Me with only a parachute. I should have brought a gas mask. Probably caused by internal pressures. There seems to be considerable volcanic activity. My little death trap. You all right to go on? Yeah, sure. What's a little poison gas? We got to find another way. You feeling strong enough, Briggs? Perhaps you shouldn't continue. Please don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Did a little noise keep you awake? Since you and a rocket came into my life. Yeah, but look at all the trouble it kept you out of. Sixteen. Fine looking kids. We have quite a story to tell them when we get back. Yes. I hope I will. I'm sorry the going's been so rough. Well, that's what I get for sitting on my big fat blueprints and helping to build guided missiles. 
I should have listened to my wife. She's been after me for years to get in condition. I guess the natives say the gods were angry tonight. Ever been married, Major? I've come close to it a couple of times, one way or another. How come you never got pinned down? <laughs> what, to have some wife tell him what dames he should or shouldn't go out with? <laughs> Not Joe. What did you see up there? A monster I've never seen before. I think he's getting rocket happy. You sure it wasn't just your imagination? I'd rather it had been. Well, all I see is spots. Stay with me, baby.
How did it happen? I'm not sure. I think it was his heart. Why didn't you yell? There wasn't time. It was unexpected. I tried to hold him, but I didn't have the strength. Another one of your unpredictables? the very top Going colorblind. He was 20 20 vision. What do you make of it, Doc? 
I don't know. I, I'm almost afraid to say. Not like any jungle I've been in. Nor ever will be, Major. You're looking at a kind of world that hasn't existed for millions of years. It's sort of like a, like a lost continent. Oh, you could call it that, I guess. Here, top of a mountain in the middle of the sky. Volcanic dust. It's almost as if time forgot this place. Everything indicates a throwback to prehistoric times. Look at that foliage. Think of the tremendous internal pressures causing such steaming pools and their continuous activity at such altitude. Must be terrific. As powerful as a stockpile of hydrogen bombs. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense. The air is thin, sure, but you can breathe without your lungs screaming for help. And we're miles above sea level. It's all the plants, Major. Practically pure oxygen. But look at this haze. Somebody got lonesome for some soft light. Put a green bulb in the sun. Yeah, like in a nightclub. Only they forgot to bring on the dames, huh? You know what the atom bomb did to the atmosphere, Major? Those same forces could exist here. Who is that to say? If we find that rocket, it may have us someday all living back in a world like this one. I'll worry about that when the time comes. Hey, Phillips, take a fix. See if you can pick up a reading on the rocket somewhere. All right. You got the Air Force, Sergeant? Yes, sir. You got yourself in an uproar over something, Joe. What's eating you? Hmm. Private weight. What is it? Clobbering this little dream world? Maybe. And what do you think of Rostov? Rostov? Oh, he's a cold fish. You know those big brains. Oh, I see. You think that he... I don't think anything yet. I never did buy that guy, even before we took off. Why? Do we know anything about the rocket? It was Willie? No. Only three guys know what makes it work. Rostov, Phillips, and Briggs. Now Briggs is gone. If anything happens to Phillips, that just leaves Rostov. He could sell us any bill of goods. Maybe he didn't want that rocket to turn back. See what you make of this. Hey, Major, we picked something up. That's it, Phillips. What's the rundown? Definite signs of radioactivity. But much too powerful to be coming from the unit in the rocket. I'm off in there somewhere. We may have hit something important, Major. Uranium. It explains a lot of things. Why the plane went out of control when we flew toward the island and the Geiger. We must have entered a field of radiation. Then when we dropped below the mountain, we passed out of it. It lost its effect. Hey, I watched up again. Does that stuff act like a magnet? That stuff is the most mysterious element in nature. The most dangerous, the most unstable, the most valuable. Yeah, babies cry for it. But our job concerns finding the rocket, not prospecting for uranium. When the rocket ran out of fuel, it was inevitably drawn to these fields. If it ran out of fuel. Simmer down, Joe. So I'll apologize if I'm wrong. All right, it's the only lead we have. Let's follow it. Get him, Sergeant? I'm starving to death, and that thing's been feeding off me for four hours like I was something sent up from room service. Pick up any late news flashes from the home front, Doc? How's everybody at the Pentagon? Happy? What'd you say? Oh, nothing. I just wondered if you... Geiger still had the jitters. Oh, well, from its activity, we're moving into a hotter zone. <laughs> well, at least we won't freeze tonight. Well, if that rocket's near the uranium fields, we're getting pretty close. I show a concentration of almost 20,000 MRs. MRs? How about a short translation for the common man, Doc? Millie Rankins. Millie who? It's like taking your temperature, Sergeant. Only this shows how hot a zone is with radioactivity. How dangerous is the area? Don't worry, Major, we're safe enough. But if the uranium in those fields were refined, we'd have been dead hours ago. Well, raise your flaps. That rocket won't find us. 
And I joined the Air Force. All right, let's take a 15-minute break. Oh, 15 minutes. Break out the ration, Sergeant. Yes, sir. company. These tracks are fresh. They're not more than an hour old. That's fine, so they're fresh, but what do they fit? Nothing human I ever saw. Not even my top sergeant had feet that big. I've seen tracks like these before. Yeah, where? In a museum. They're brontosaurus tracks. Bron 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 what? Hard to believe, isn't it, Major? My calendar says 20th century A.D., not 100 million B.C. I appreciate your feelings, Major, but you can't change what we've just seen. Or what may lie ahead. Come on, let's get our packs. We've got to move. You sure we're still on fix? I'll make another check, if you like. All right, on course. Good. Hey, Doc. More Brenner. Get more tracks. And they're going the same way we are. That's right. Hey, Doc. Ain't there some other way to get to those uranium fields, huh? There may be. Why don't you look for it? I'm going to follow the needle. Okay. Hey, Doc. I think I'll stick with the needle, too, huh?
Just keep your nylon all in one piece, baby. I may be needing you yet. Too bad I couldn't have gotten a picture of that animal this afternoon. Pictures? You're lucky you weren't killed. How do you account for all this, Doc? How do you explain it? Who can explain it? It's an impossibility. Yet here we are, right in the middle of it. That's where I always wind up. That animal we saw this afternoon hasn't existed for millions and millions of years. It had disappeared before man was ever heard of. What's the matter with it? Don't know it's supposed to be dead? You know what a miracle is, Lieutenant? Sure. Can you explain it? No. I can't explain what happened this afternoon, either. Well, thanks for straightening the whole thing out, Doc. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> and what a relief. Uh, good night. I'll call you when it's your watch. Strange and rather frightening out there. Take any of those rocks. Harness its stored up energy. Convert it into a power plant. We could build a whole new world. Or destroy the one we've got. Huh. Ironic, but here we are sleeping on top of the richest uranium field known to man. Gives one a real cozy feeling. If you don't mind having nightmares. You are a cynical, suspicious man, aren't you, Nolan? Maybe. Oh, baby. What a little dream you are. And your shape. Perfect. Oh, everything. Everything about you. Beautiful, beautiful. It's just one thing about you, baby. If you could just, if you could just have propellers instead of jets. Perfect. Sergeant! Damn it! Rostov and Phillips are gone. You were on guard. Why didn't you watch them? Who? Rostov and Phillips, they're gone. I did. I never closed my eyes all night. Maybe your lunch is right. I didn't know it. Hey, wait for me. What are you doing? His foot became lodged in the rocks. I wasn't able to free him by myself. What's the idea of coming out here alone? Keep your voices down. Look. <laughs> hanging around for hours ever since I discovered Dr. Phillips. Get down! Get out of sight! Bullets are no good. Noise will only attract them. We'll have to sweat it out. Go ahead and yell. Do your good. You got us trapped into this. Now go ahead and yell loud. Oh. 
What's a few more lives, you crazy, stupid, uranium happy? <laughs> Shoot with the eyes! Scientists lose your marbles every now and then. I'm sorry to have caused you so much trouble, Lieutenant. I woke up a little earlier than the rest of you this morning and seemed a swell chance to grab some pictures. I was lucky Mike followed me. You think I'd let you get yourself killed in the prehistoric jungle? We've been friends too long. Well, the, uh, well, the leg's feeling better. Come on, let's keep walking, huh? Disturbed because it's still B.C. instead of A.D.? No. I'm convinced. I also said if I was wrong, I'd apologize. Well, that's not necessary. Don't ask me why. But at the beginning, I had you figured for playing on the wrong team. I know. I'm a Russian. I'm used to it. Almost my whole life has been a witch hunt, one way or another. First it was Hitler and one of his concentration camps. Then my wife and unborn child died in another with Russian-made barbed wire. It doesn't change them much. A lot of guys are finding that out every day. All respect for my country lies dead in those camps. I hope to go back and resurrect it someday. No country can survive when it loses the respect of its own people or of the world. You go back, Mike. The way you want to go back. Too many guys on our side fighting for the same thing. Even if, heaven forbid, it means pushing buttons on more rockets like the one out there somewhere. Heaven forbid, Joe. Same unknown vapors we ran into coming up the mountain. Being forced through the earth at tremendous pressures. Too much pressure with no safety valve. And if they should ever react with the uranium fields... Why the 4th of July? Oh, that's it. That's what? It's the end of the road. The Geiger can't take us any further. 
He means that we are right in the middle of the uranium deposits and they seem to extend for miles. Then how do we find the rocket? I wish I knew. It could be any place. Maybe we could wander around up here for weeks. Come on, let's get out of this graveyard. <coughs> Hey, Joe. I don't know how long these guys will hold out. They got pleats in their pants. They're folding so fast. What's eating you? You heard what Philip said. <coughs> you know what chances we have. We're beating our brains out for something we may never find. We don't even know where to look now. If the rocket's up here, it'll rot before anybody can get to it. Are you bored? Yeah, I'm bored. We're down to our last few rounds of ammo. Worried? <laughs> no. Run out of bullets, I got a new secret weapon. See any more of those fugitives from the zoo? I'll just walk up to them and kill them with spit. Ah, oh, who wants to be a dead hero? Are you speaking for yourself, Danny, or for them? Maybe I'm saying what they don't want to say. The lieutenant seems to think you've got something on your minds. So I'll give you a chance to unburden yourselves. Got nothing to say? Well, I have. We're low on food, we're low on water, and we're low on ammunition. Maybe we're getting a little low on nerves. But I got news for you. I walk around with my guts twisted up same as you. I want to clear out of here the same as you. I didn't ask to be trapped in this rat race, but as long as I'm here, I'll try and finish. Anybody who wants to can knock it off now. Feel better, Major? Well, don't just stand there, Major. We got a rocket to find. Baby, you ain't getting any lighter. So I'll spit in her eye. That big buzzer would make good eating. Well, let's find out. I think it fell right around here. Hey, look! Oh, with a mad passion, I love you. Let's get to it. Get easy with that, you big slob. Get away from that. Keep your voices down. Stay out of sight. Well, they can't stick around forever. They should drop dead. They should have a few million years ago. They may be here for days. Hey, Rostov, how much time will you need to get the unit out of the rocket? Depends on how much damage we find. Ordinarily 10, maybe 15 minutes might do it. Another five to get the data off the light recording instruments. Can you knock off the whole works in half an hour? Should give us plenty of time. I think I've hit an angle to get rid of them. It's going to be rough, but it might work. Danny, you and Willie circle the animals. Get them back of the rocks and boulders and start shooting. It might bait them away from the rocket long enough for Rostov and Phillips to move in. We're going to shoot the works on this. If we don't do it the first time, we've had it. Hope you've got plenty of spit. I run out. You'll know it. Willie.
incredible, Mike. Maximum thrust registered 9.5. And I designed the controls for 2.5. A team of those animals out there couldn't have turned it back. What does that mean? Was this rat race worth it or not? Eminently, Major. Now that we have these, we'll know how to design the next one. No more unpredictables. <laughs> Watch. It may come back. What a way to go, baby. You couldn't help me. You'll make it all right, kid. C cigarette. Take it slow and easy on the way down. We've left enough behind us. I don't want to leave any more. How's the leg holding on? I'll make it. You, Mike? All right. But if Willie were here, I'm sure he'd have more to say. Yeah, he'd probably say. Hey, it's gonna rain. Let me call with an umbrella. How you like that? We have to move fast. The whole mountain's blowing up under us.
rather this way than to have it go on living with us. Thank you.